Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Fat Mike Media with your host, Fat Mike. And today we will be discussing uh, Joe Biden, and we will be going over this story that I have come across called Fact Check Joe Biden Has Condemned Antifa Violence. So let me bring that up here for you to see. And this will be the article, and along with it is attached a video that I would like to go over. It's a little old, but my channel's only like two and a half, three weeks old now. So i got to put content on here somehow. Um, but I want to call out the so-called fact checkers that did this, because I have to say, this video did no such thing. Joe Biden did not condemn Antifa. He might have condemned violent protests. He did not condemn Antifa. So you want to be specific and factual. Well, let's do it, fact checkers. Also, before I get on along with this video, right now, my content, my channel is not being monetized. So if you could, I will be leaving a donate link in the bottom to a PayPal if you would like to help fund the channel so we can get the proper equipment to create all this um but we will leave that in the link if you cannot afford to help donate the best way to support the channel would be subscribe or um well subscribe and like our like our videos and help share our content so to, so it'll get noticed better but let's get on with this show so Post on Facebook claimed that Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has failed to condemn Antifa, which they're true. The left-wing anti-fascist movement whose followers have used aggressive tactics, including physical confrontations to intimidate groups they deem authoritarian or racist. This claim is false, which it's not because they do attack, uh, like they do attack anybody. They, they've they even attacked uh, libertarians, and that's the, the class that I fall in, and we're like dead fucking center. But yet we're being labeled authoritarian and racist. As the former vice president has condemned Antifa and the use of violence from protesters on both the left and the right. No, just the right, which I have a video to show that he did not do any of this that they're saying. An example of a post making this claim can be found here. As reported by Reuters here, Antifa amorphous movement whose adherents oppose people or groups they consider authoritarian or racist, according to the Anti-Defamation League, ADL which monitors extremist Tifa aims to intimidate and dissuade racists, but its aggressive tactics, including, eh, including physical confrontations, can create a vicious self-defeating cycle of attacks, counterattacks, and blame, the ADL said. On, sep eh, on September 7th, 2020, four days after police shot and killed a self-declared anti-fascist activist, <laughs> say that 10 times fast in washington state as they moved in to arrest him on suspicion he had fatally shot a right-wing counter protester in portland oregon biden condemned antifa in an interview with pennsylvania which is down below and i will be playing that pennsylvania nbc news affiliate wgao here asked by reporter barbara barr do you condemn antifa biden responded yes i do violence no matter who it is well, funny, because the video is more of, like, a speech over an interview. Because I don't hear and did not hear a single reporter asking Biden one damn thing. It was more of a speech. The Reuters fact check team previously debunked claims on social media. Social media that Joe Biden has condemned violent protests. In the days following the death of George Floyd and Paul in police custody on may 25th 2020 joe biden wrote on his blog protesting such brutality is right and necessary it's an utterly american response but burning down communities and needless destruction is not violence that endangers life is not here he again condemned violence looting and the destruction of property on june 2nd in philadelphia and on july 28th in wilmington so here is the video that they say he condemned antifa and well, we'll let you be the judge and you can see for yourself 
12. And I have not edited any of this because as you can see, we're right onto the page. So any edits done was by whoever. So ABC News is the ones that put this video together. What the hell? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. George Floyd's last words, but they didn't die with him. They're still being heard, echoing all across this nation. They speak to a nation where, too often, just the color of your skin puts your life at risk. They speak to a nation where more than 100,000 people have lost their lives to the virus and 40 million have filed for unemployment with a disproportionate number of those deaths and job losses concentrated in black and brown communities. And they speak to a nation where every day millions of people, <clears throat> millions, not at the moment of losing their life, but in the course of living their life, are saying to themselves, I can't breathe. It's a wake-up call to our nation, in my view. It's for all of us, and I mean all of us. It's not the first time we've heard those words. They're the same words we heard from Eric Garner when his life was taken away six years ago. But it's time to listen to those words, to try to understand them, to respond to them, respond with action. A country is crying out for leadership, leadership that can unite us, leadership that brings us together, leadership that can recognize pain and deep grief of communities that have had a knee on their neck for a long time. There's no place for violence, no place for looting or destroying property or burning churches or destroying businesses, many of them built by the very people of color. So he only talks about the looting and that he is not condemning Antifa. Just as they ranted and raged about Trump denouncing the Proud Boys, they specifically wanted him to say, I denounce the Proud Boys. He won't say, I denounce Antifa. He won't say, I denounce Black, Mo at Black Lives Matter. So do you see the fuckery right there? This is no, nothing even close to denouncing Antifa. And whoever the fuck fact-checked this should be fired. Now, this whole thing, like this whole story here on this page is by Reuters staff. But who fact check this you can't just put a fact check and say somebody did this and whatnot and it not have anything but you can't put a fact check you can't put some kind of warning or some type of shit like this and say they did something that they didn't and then you and then you're dumb enough to even attach the whole video of this to the same article that proves he did not he only talked down upon the rioting and the but who's to blame antifa and the black lives matter organizations a country is crying out for leadership leadership that can unite us leadership that brings us together and he's doing neither of that either. Leadership that can recognize pain and deep grief of communities that have had a knee on their neck for a long time. There's no place for violence. There's going to be a whole lot more knees on our necks with under his establishment and i guarantee you that and please fact checkers don't try to say that this is inappropriate content because i'm not talking factual shit i'm expressing my beliefs my opinion and you can't fact check somebody's opinion because it's neither wrong nor true it's how somebody feels you can't fact check that i don't care if i was wrong or not it's how I feel. And the First Amendment grants me the right of freedom of speech. No place for looting or destroying property or burning churches or destroying businesses. Many of them built by the very people of color who are the first time in their lives are beginning to realize their dreams and build wealth for their families. Nor is it acceptable for our police sworn to protect and serve all people to escalate tension, resort to excessive violence. <clears throat> we need to distinguish between legitimate peaceful protests and opportunistic violent destruction. We have to be vi vigilant. What was that? <clears throat> we need to distinguish between legitimate peaceful protests and opportunistic violent destruction. We have to be vi vigilant about the violence that's 
being done by this incumbent president to our economy and to the pursuit of justice. When peaceful protesters dispersed in order for a president, a president from the doorstep of the People's House, the White House, using tear gas and flash grenades in order to stage a photo op, a photo op in one of the most historic churches in the country, or at least in Washington, D.C. We can be <coughs> forgiven for believing the president is more interested in, the, in, in power than in principle. More interested in serving the passions of his base than the needs of the people in his care. For that's what the presidency is, the duty to care, to care for all of us, not just those who vote for us, but all of us, not just our donors, but all of us. The president held up the Bible at St. John's Church yesterday. I just wish he opened it once in a while instead of brandishing it. If he opened it, he could have learned something. They're all called to love one another as we love ourselves. It's really hard work, but it's the work of America. Donald Trump is interested in doing that work. Instead, he's preening and sweeping away all the guardrails that have long protected our democracy, guardrails that have helped make possible this nation's path to a more perfect union, a union that constantly requires reform and rededication. And yes, the protest from voices that are mistreated, ignored, left out or left behind. But it is a union. You worth fighting for. And that's why I'm running for president. In addition to the Bible, the president might also want to open the U.S. Constitution once in a while. If he did, he'd find a thing called the First Amendment. And what it says in the beginning, it says the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition their government for redress of grievances. And he is wrong. And I am going to bring that up. Give me one second here to open up a new source. So, here are the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the First Amendment states here, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment, at an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press which is people of like me and yet they're letting facebook hinder all this twitter hinder all this or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances so the word of the day is peaceably so if you want to claim that you're a peaceful organization you don't do so-called peaceful shit by day and then burn shit down by night to light up the sky okay you totally contradict your whole th meaning and definition behind your organization when you do one thing and then do another because actions speak louder than words and if you say you're peaceful but then you go and shoot somebody you're not peaceful so by you not liking the president you go and burn down businesses that have nothing to even do with the fucking government that's not peaceably and that's part of the protest so therefore your protest is not peaceably so Simple as that. As well as that, man. It's not that hard. The shit's clear as fucking day. Clear as day. So we'll continue this video. I don't remember if he's got to the part about a photo op, but I got some stuff for that too. That's kind of an essential notion building into this country. Mr. President, that's America. That's America. No horses rising up on their hind legs to push back peaceful protests not using the American military to move against the American people. This is a nation of values. Our freedom to speak is a cherished knowledge that lives inside every American almost from the time you're a kid. We're going to allow any president to quiet our voice. We won't let those who see this as an opportunity to sow chaos throw up a smoke screen to distract us from very real and legit legitimate grievances. 
at the heart of these protests. We can't, we can't leave this moment, we can't leave this moment thinking that we can once again turn away and do nothing. We can't do that this time. We just can't. The moment has come for our nation to deal with systemic racism, to deal with the growing economic inequity that exists in our nation, to deal with the denial of the promise of this nation, made to so many. You know, I've said from the outset of this election that we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. And we are in the battle for the soul of this nation. What we believe, and maybe most importantly, who we want to be, it's all at stake. <coughs> That's truer today than it's ever been, at least in my lifetime. And it's this urgency, it's in this urgency, we can find a path forward. Now, the history of this nation teaches us that in some of our darkest moments of despair, we've made some of our greatest progress, some of our darkest moments. The 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments followed the Civil War. The greatest economic growth in world history grew out of the Great Depression. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 and 60, the Voting Rights Act of 65 came in the tracks of Bull Connor's vicious dogs. To paraphrase Reverend Barber, it's the morning where we find hope. It's in the morning where we find hope when we mourn. But it's going to take more than talk. That makes no sense. We've had talk before. We've had protests before. But we've got to now vow to make this at least an area of action and reverse the systemic racism with a long overdue concrete changes. The action will not be completed <clears throat> in the first 100 days of my presidency if I'm fortunate enough to be elected or even in my entire term. It's going to take the work of a generation. But if this agenda will take time to complete, it should not wait for the first 100 days of my presidency to get started. A down payment on what is long overdue should come now, should come immediately. I call on the Congress to act this month on measures that will be the first step in this direction, starting with real police reform. Congressman Jeffries has a bill to outlaw chokeholds. Congress should put it on the president's desk in the next few days. There are other measures to stop transferring weapons of war to police forces, improve oversight and accountability, to create a model use of force standard. That also should be made law this month. No more excuses, no delays. If Mitch McConnell can bring in the United States Senate to confirm Trump's unqualified judicial nominees who will run roughshod over our Constitution now, it's time to... If anyone is unqualified to be a president, should be this man here that has to read from teleprompters. And the shit that he's reading off of these teleprompters ain't even the shit that he wrote. He had no say-so in any of the shit that was put on them. And if you think he did... If, if, yeah, if you think he did, then you're retarded. Past legislation will give true meaning to our constitutional promise of equal protection under the law. Looking ahead in the first 100 days of my presidency, I've committed to creating a National Police Oversight Commission. And a hundred different I've long believed we orders. need real community policing. We need each and every police department of the country to understand a comprehensive review of their, undertake a comprehensive review of their hiring. Their training, their de-escalation, some have already done it, some have, are in the process of doing it. The federal government should give, give the cities and states the tools and the resources they need to implement reforms. More police officers meet the higher standards of their procession. Most of them do it. All the more reason why bad cops should be dealt with severely and swiftly. We all need to take a hard look at the culture that allows for the senseless tragedies that keep happening. And we need to learn from the cities and the precincts that are getting it right. We know, though, we have, in order to have true American justice, we need economic justice as well. 
Here, too, is, there's much to be done. As an immediate step, Congress should act, should act now to rectify racial inequities that allow COVID-19 recovery funds to be diverted from where they live. I'll be setting forth my agenda on economic justice and opportunity in the weeks and months ahead, but it begins with health care. Health care should be a right, not a privilege. The quickest route to universal coverage in this country is to expand on Obamacare. We could do it, we should do it. But this president, even now, in the midst of a public health crisis with massive unemployment, at well, wants to destroy it. He doesn't care how many millions of Americans will be hurt because he's consumed with this blinding. Funny, he's talking about unemployment and, and out of anything, um, President Trump actually brought jobs back to America from other countries. And all these companies have the right to leave and go to places that will treat them better and by letting this man reverse everything that Trump had put into place for us all the jobs that he had brought back to us this man is going to reverse it so at that rate, Joe, it's not Trump's fault that people are becoming unemployed. It is your fault because you're destroying jobs before you've even created their replacements. So how does that work out, Joe? You're going to starve us out before you rebuild? I mean, shit, if they had to rebuild the electrical grid, if the shit's working right now, they're going to build one off to the side. And then they'll wait till it's finished, connect it up, and then start running shit off of it before they destroy the other shit. They're not going to destroy the power grid that we're on now because it'll take 40 fucking years to rebuild. No, they'll build another shit set up and then they'll convert the shit over before they do that. That's how shit should work. Not fucking destroy shit and then let all these people fucking go hungry and die out before you're going to give them another fucking job. If only we all had the kind of job security that you pathetic socialist fucking politicians had, man. Has anybody ever looked into how much fucking Nancy Pelosi's dumbass is worth? It should be a fucking crime for them to even be that fucking rich. It just proves that all they're about, they're, they're the ones that are self-indulged. Nancy Pelosi's got fucking $15 pint of custom flavored ice cream she gets specially made for. Her. Has a twenty-some thousand dollar fridge. Has how many million dollar fucking house that was given to her as a gift after she got in her little position of power. She should be stripped from that seat. Ego when it comes to Barack Obama, President Obama. The president should withdraw his lawsuit to strike down Obamacare, and the Congress should prepare to pass the act I proposed. To and as a libertarian, I knew from the gate that that shit was not going to go through for. Trump to destroy Obamacare. I knew that that wasn't going to go through. And everybody got all fucking hysterical about that. But look at Canada. So apparently Canada is going to be broken about 10 years and not be able to afford anything else but to take care of the medical bills. And there's a lot more to deal with within an entire country than just taking care of everybody's medical expenses. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a person that's on state insurance now, and I don't know what, what I would do without it. But the 
thing that he's making hard for these private companies and whatnot. And it's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. I mean, his plan here is going to basically destroy people on their private plans that are comfortable where they're at. Y'all really need to understand how to choose between the better of two evils. You really need to understand the logic behind that. Because you really picked the worst possible candidate in the entire fucking galaxy. And I'm just waiting to the day that he fakes an illness... And gives over complete control to Kamala Harris. And I wouldn't be surprised if he did it right on that hundredth day. Uh, but I'll make a special video about that shit. Expand Obamacare to millions more so everyone's covered. These last few months. We'll tell you though. Obamacare should not be giving health care to illegal immigrants. I do not want my tax dollars paying for shit out of this country. Tax dollars should not be spent on shit outside of this country. It should only be spent internally to help our country and our country only. And I have a right to say that because I am a taxpayer. I work at least 40 hours a week. I bust my ass. Now, I'd be damned if we'd be giving health care to other fucking countries and shit when we can't even fucking house our own damn homeless and our own shit. It makes no fucking sense. Yet, they're going to put all these refugees and shit in the nice houses, I bet. But yet, we can't even put our own people in housing. So I can only imagine what kind of housing that all these people are going to get that they're letting how many million come in. Oh, you got to get here within 100 days. It's, it's just stupid. And by giving them that off, they're putting their life in ridiculous amounts of danger to try to get here through the shit that they have to through the other countries that they have to go through to get here. There's a lot of borders to cross, and some of them have been known to just gun the people down. Men, women, children, all. They don't care. And if only these people did this shit legal way, they wouldn't have to jeopardize their lives. But coming here illegally is how they jeopardize their lives. Once! We've seen America's true heroes. Healthcare workers, docs, nurses, delivery truck drivers, grocery store workers. You know, we've come up with a new phrase for them. Essential workers. Essential workers. Any job should be essential work. If it puts food on your table, pays your fucking light bill, your heat bill. If you survive from your paycheck, you are an essential employee. It shouldn't matter about this stupid little list that he just said. Any paying job is an essential job. Wake the fuck up, Joe. Well, we, we need to do more than praise them. We need to pay them. We need to pay them. Because if it weren't clear before, it's clear now. Yeah, well, honestly, these jobs should not be responsible for paying the employees the hazard pay. They shouldn't. The government should. Now, this country wasn't built by Wall Street bankers and CEOs. It was built by the great American middle class, which was built by unions and our essential workers. Yeah, you know, the I unions know that you just destroyed and uncertainty and anger. 10 to 20,000 jobs just now, within like a week ago. But you really care about jobs, all right. In the country. I understand. No, you don't. I know so many Americans are suffering. Suffering loss of a loved one. Suffering economic hardship, wondering, can I feed my family tomorrow? What's going to happen? Suffering under the weight of a generation after generation after generation of hurt inflicted on people of color, on black, brown, and native communities in particular. 
Like many of you, I know what it means to grieve. <laughs> My losses are not the same as losses felt by so many. But I know what it feels like when you think you can't go on. I know what it means to have that black hole in your chest where your grief is being sucked into it. Just a few days ago marked the fifth anniversary of my son Bo's passing. That's what that makes me want to do. That's and there are still moments <clears throat> when the pain is so great it feels no different than the day <clears throat> I sat in that bed as he passed away. But I also know that the best way to bear loss and pain is to turn it into that anger and anguish into purpose. And Americans know what our purpose is as a nation. It has to be guided. It has to be guided. It's guided us from the very beginning. No, we don't need to be guided. You know, it's been reported because we each have different purposes in this John world F. to do. Was... And not be guided by fucking old dumb morons. Assassinated. Little Yolanda King came home from school in Atlanta and jumped in her daddy's arms and said, Oh, daddy, she said. Now we're never going to get our freedom. Her daddy was reassuring, strong, and brave. He said, no, don't worry, baby. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Amid the violence and fear, Dr. King, he persevered. He was driven by his dream of a nation where Justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. Then, <clears throat> 1968, hate cut him down in Memphis. A few days before Dr. King was murdered, <clears throat> he gave a final Sunday sermon in Washington, <clears throat> where he told us that <clears throat> the arc you sure you of the don't got is long. He said it bends towards justice. And we know we can bend it because we have. You can bend We have to believe that justice. still. That's our purpose. It's been our purpose in the very beginning. He said it bends towards justice. And we know we can bend it because we have. We have to believe that still. That's our purpose. It's been our purpose in the very beginning. To become a nation where all men and women are not only created equal, but they're treated equally. Not just created equal, but treated You want to talk equality, yet you want to create... Yet the, the Democratic Party tried to pass a bill that protected only the speech, freedom of speech for Democrats and would allow any other speech to be criticized and attacked. That's not equality, folks. Equality is when if you're allowed to do it, I'm allowed to do it. Exactly the same. Not, not having things like rules for thee and not for me. That's not equality. Your money should not grant you special privileges. Created equally to become a nation defined, in Dr. King's words, not only by the absence of tension, but by the presence of justice. It's not enough just to not have tension, but justice. Today in America, it's hard to keep faith that justice is at hand. I know that. You know that. Pain is raw. The pain is real. The president of the United States must be part of the solution, not the problem. But this president today is part of the problem and accelerates it. When he tweeted the words, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. Yeah, well, were... who do you think is going to be the one shooting when the looting starts? The people protecting them and their shit. That's going to be the one shooting. And I'm not condoning violence or anything of that nature. I'm just stating opinions and my thoughts and calling out his fucking bullshit. Oh shit, I lost my spot. But I know what it feels like when you think you can't go on.
Your daddy was reassuring, strong, and brave. Not attention, but justice. Today in America, it's hard to keep faith that justice is at hand. I know that. You know that. The pain is raw. The pain is real. The President of the United States must be part of the solution, not the problem. But this president today is part of the problem and accelerates it. You're part of the problem, When he Joe. tweeted the words, when the looting starts, the shooting starts. They weren't the words of a president. They were words of a racist Miami police chief in the 60s. When he tweeted that protesters, quote, would have been... When the looting starts, the shooting starts. That's so racist. When it spoke of no color or anything, just when the riot looting starts, the shooting starts. I don't... I, like, personally, I wouldn't care what color you were. If you're trying to take my shit, then I'm gonna treat you the same way. You you trespassing, you, you stealing private property, you know. You all will be treated equally, and that will be with some lead. When people would have been really hurt, end of quote. They weren't the words of a president. They were the kind of words Bull Connor would have used unleashing his dogs on innocent women and children. You know, <coughs> the American story is a story about action and reaction. That's how history works. We can't be naive about it. I wish I could say that hate began with Donald Trump and will end with him. It didn't. No, because you won't even leave the man alone because you're going to continue to say, oh, it's because of Donald Trump. It's because of Donald Trump. It's because of Donald Trump because it's Donald Trump. Even if the man was dead, you're going to still continue to say shit is his fault because you Democrats can't own up to your own shit. How much shit did Obama put this country in. Every president has to clean up shit before he left off. And every president leaves shit for the next one. And since Kennedy, Trump was the one that I feel has done the most and gotten the most done. This old fuck wants to fucking come in and try to fucking abuse executive orders just to, to erase everything. Did any other presidents ever do that to... to did, did Trump do that to... Uh, to Obama's? No. Did he have to go through a lengthy court hearing and whatnot to even try to get um, Obamacare changed? Yeah, he did. Did he win? No. But then you get this old motherfucker coming in here, and he's going to take an executive order and just override everything that he wants to get changed. How would you have felt if Trump did that? You would have never let up on him. Why are you going to let this old prick get away with the shit, people? And it won't. American history isn't a fairy tale with a guaranteed happy ending. The battle for the soul of this nation has been a constant push and pull for more than 240 years. A tug of war between the American ideal that we're all created equal and the harsh reality that racism has long torn us apart. The honest truth is that both elements are part of the American character. Both elements. At our best, the American ideal wins out. But it's never a rout. It's always a fight. <laughs> and the battle is never fully won. But we can't ignore the truth that we're at our best when we open our hearts rather than clench our fists. Funny, he wants to open... Donald his heart to every other country and uh, every other minority except for his own fucking people. He'll throw us all under the bus and act like he's helping us when he's putting America last. He'll never put America first. Guess who wanted to? Trump did. Because we should put America first before anything else. Because without America, we can't help anybody. But we should learn how to help ourselves before we spend all of our resources and shit trying to fix other people's fucking issues that don't even want to take the time and day to even fucking worry about it them damn selves. P the, the, the party that's going to label United States citizens as terrorists more than they're going to label the actual fucking terrorist terrorists. It's pathetic. It's sickening. 
It's un-American. Trump has turned this country into a battlefield riven by old resentments no. and fresh fears. Antifa and BLM has turned America into what it is today. Not Trump. The Democratic Party and them. Nancy Pelosi, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Antifa, and the BLM are all responsible for where shit is today. Not Trump. Trump has been one of the best fucking presidents that we could ever have had. And I wasn't even for him to begin with, but he grew on me. And now, I'd say, especially during my lifetime, and it probably will be because, I mean, I know I got some years ahead of me, but I guarantee you that Trump will be probably be the best president out of my whole fucking life. He thinks division helps him. He never spoke His of division. His narcissism has become more... If anybody's nar nar narcissistic and wants division is the democratic party i mean for fuck's sake if anybody's about the vision is the democrats because they funded and founded the fucking kkk and then they tried to spin the shit around and say that the republican party was the one behind the kkk when they're the fucking founders go look in your history books kids because you can easily find that the Founder and creator of the Ku Klux Klan was a Democrat. I mean, for fuck's sake, Joe Biden even went and did a eulogy to one of the Klan's members. But he's far against racism, yet he was friends with fucking a racist. A known fucking racist that was a full-fledged member of the Klan, motherfuckers. Of the Klan. And he was a Democratic member. Not fucking Republican. Not Libertarian. Not Conservative. Democrat, bitches. Like, I guarantee you that the Democratic Party was pure... I mean, that the, the Ku Klux Klan was purely created just to be a tactic to try to... For them to go out, act like they're fucking far right shit when in fact they're really far left important than the nation's well-being that he leads i ask every american i mean this in the bottom of our ask every american look at where we are now and think anew is this who we are is this who we want to be is this who we want to pass on to our children and our grandchildren fear anger finger pointing Who's rather the than the pursuit of happiness pointing. incompetence in Who's the ones finger pointing? Because anytime you see a Democrat on fucking television anymore, they're constantly talking shit on Republicans, conservatives. I mean, look at fucking Hillary calling half of anybody that voted for Trump part of a basket of deplorables. But did any of our people ever fucking say shit like that? No, because all the fucking Republicans that are in the Congress and all that... They're busy doing what must be done while the Democrats sit back and fucking talk shit. And where's name calling and all that shit gonna get us? Nowhere. You act like a bunch of fucking school kids. It's pathetic. No wonder fucking China laughs at us. This man's gonna fucking sell us out to him. If it was up to Trump, we needed to go liberate the Uyghur community before they fucking kill them all in the genocide shit that's going on over there but no fucking left to these people they're gonna start, start trying to adopt shit like them just how fucking north korea is you know like you you just like the fucking asshole out of new york that mayor um nobody could go up on uh new year's and watch the ball drop or watch fireworks but but the mayor and his wife was out there the only ones dancing and whatnot getting to watch the fireworks in person sounds a lot like fucking kim jong-un over in north korea you know oh and just like when joe biden had uh did that parade you know i mean they wanted to make a big deal about the uh the national guard having their backs turned well you hire you you bring in all these people to protect you but then you what expect them to watch your parade well if you wanted people to watch your parade then you should have let actual people attend not bring in your fucking protection and then make them what be the the guests and the attendees instead of your protection they're supposed to watch you while you strut around and oh i'm mr president i'm the i'm the president now 
now. I mean, honestly, too bad. Too bad you didn't go and do like Kennedy did and take the top off so you could be seen, buddy. And then have all your people not watching the grounds, you know. But I'm not condoning violence, so I'm just fucking going off right now. This is just some stupid shit, man. It's just some fucking stupid shit. Oh, and this shit's got under my skin so much. I'm gonna go fucking smoke me a L after I finish this video. Yes, sir. So we'll continue this shit and get it over with. Anxiety, self-absorption, selfishness, or do we want to be the America we know we can be? The America we know in our hearts we could be and should be. Sellouts. Look, I look at the presidency as a very big job. And nobody will get it right every time. And I won't either. But I promise you this. I won't traffic in fear and division. I won't fan the flames of hate. I'll seek to heal the racial wounds that have long plagued our country, not use them for political gain. <laughs> I'll do my job and I will take Yet almost every time you see this man on here, Trump this, Trump that, it's not my fault, it's Trump's fault. Like, I'm so tired of you lying to us, Joe. Why did anybody feel that this man deserved another chance at letting America down? This man is going to destroy this country. I can already fucking see it coming. And if it doesn't get destroyed completely, it's going to be just like the movie Idiocracy. And if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go watch it. You can most likely find a free version of it on YouTube here. But here, while well, I finish rolling this. Responsibility. I won't blame uh, others. Four or five more minutes. I'll never you forget. Won't blame I others. will never forget. I promise you. This job you won't is. won't blame others, but yet he comes on there and blames everything on Trump. Him, Nancy Pelosi. And AOC. And honey, I ain't call I ain't cat calling your ass by calling you AOC. You really need to go look up the definition, the real definition, not your definition, but the real definition of cat calling. Cause cat calling would be as if you was to walk by and me be like, Oh baby, why don't you come over here and sit on daddy's lap? Shit like that. Or yo baby, you got some nice tits on you. That's catcalling, not calling you by abbreviation. That is not catcalling. You need to definitely go back to school. I don't know what they teach, taught you over in the Middle East, but that ain't catcalling, honey. It's not about me. It's about you. It's about us. And I work not only to rebuild the nation, but to build it better than it was. We're the only nation in the world that goes through crisis and comes out better. We, to build a better future. That's what America does, to build a better future. We build the future. It may, in fact, well, be the most American thing to do. <laughs> build the future. We hunger for liberty the way Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass did. We thirst for the vote like Susan B. Anthony and Ella Baker and John Lewis did. We strive to explore the stars, cure disease, make an imperfect union more perfect than it's been. We may come up short, but at our best, we try. Oh, but you ain't going to give credit to Trump for trying. If he, like, you won't even give credit to Trump even if he did succeed. You're going to stay bashing him. On every little fucking thing. But we're supposed to give praise to you for trying and failing, though. We're supposed to give praise to you for uh, you trying without you even trying. Just like you have the organization, organization to cure cancer 
and you've paid how many millions out to people sitting at desks doing nothing and not even come close or even attempt at finding a cure. But yet you're taking in donations and writing fucking checks to people for supposedly putting in work there. But yet your company has nothing to show for. But we're supposed to give you praise for that. Yeah, you're really going to cure cancer even though you're, you are you say you are, but you're sitting in a fucking desk twiddling your fucking thumbs, probably looking at porn on your fucking work computer because that's all the fucking shit getting done on there because you ain't over there fucking really trying to fight fucking cancer. Americans, we're facing a formidable enemies. They include not only the coronavirus and the terrible impact on the lives and livelihoods, but also the selfishness and fear and that have loomed over Democrats. our national life for the last three years. And I choose those words advisedly, selfishness and fear. No, it's been going on Defeating since the last those eight years before the four years, and the only duty. relief we had was and for the last four years. that duty includes remembering who we should be, who we should be. Are we supposed to be people like North Korea and be fucking just like human drones to you and do as you say? Or get our heads chopped off, Joe? Because I feel that that's coming. That's why Joe. That's why uh, Obama was trying to get the guillotines back in here so they could literally cut our fucking heads off again, right? We should be the America of FDR and Eisenhower, of Rosa Parks and Martin Luther Oh, wait. Oh, you also blamed Trump for all the, the Mexicans and shit in cages yet obama is the one that had the cages built and first fucking filled but oh because trump didn't have it shut down right away and just deceased it's now all of his fault now huh we're gonna blame him for creating it building it and all that right yeah because trump had it, apparently built it during obama's term and it's all trump's doing right no no it's not Get out of your, get your head out of your fucking ass, America. Tough love, baby. Dr. King Jr. of Jonah Salt and Neil love Armstrong. Get the fuck out. We should be the America that cherishes life, liberty, and courage. And above all, we should be the America that cherishes each other. Life, each liberty, and, and courage us. over life, liberty, and justice. You know, justice. we're a nation in pain. We must not let our pain destroy us. We're a nation enraged. Don't we let your let pain rage. destroy us. Just let me destroy you. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying, I think. Consume us. We're a nation that's exhausted. But we will not allow our exhaustion to... Yeah, we're exhausted from your little Antifa and BLM terrorist organizations is what we're fucking exhausted of. Fetus. As president, it's my commitment to all of you to lead on these issues and to listen. Now that is a because pearl. Because I truly believe in my heart of hearts, we can overcome. When we stand together... Yeah, we kind of overcome, Joe. Well, we can take you well, out and put you to pasture, motherfucker. We can charge you with treason along with AOC and Kamala and Nancy Pelosi, most of all. Rise stronger than we were before. We'll move that arc closer to justice. We'll reach out to one another. So speak out for one another. As long as and you're please, Democrat. please, do what's recently been happening. Take care of one another. As long as you're this Democrat. This is the United States of America. No, we're the United States of Democrats. That's what they want. <laughs> There's never been anything we've been unable to do when we set our mind to do it and we've done it together. Together. United. Together. United. That's where we are at our best. May God bless you all. Amen. May God protect our troops. And a woman. Thank you. Most 
fucking load of bullshit that I've seen in all my life, I have to say. And I know that there was at one point which I had missed the time to bring this shit up. But he wanted to talk about Trump staging a fucking photo op. Well, talk about a photo op is when he was trying to give the soldiers those biscuits. Alright. Hold on, let me close that out. Yeah. But he wanted to fucking... No, wait, no. Eh, wrong shit. Yeah, but, like, he wanted to... So I don't have the thing pulled up right now. But I'm sure that most of y'all have seen the video of where the inauguration day that... I think it was inauguration. It was the day of the Capitol riots. Um, when he brought in all the National Guards... He had them line up. They had, like, a box of fucking, like, small packs of uh, cookies, and he was calling them biscuits. Giving them biscuits. So, like, dude, we're in America. Why are you calling them biscuits? That's an England thing. But he wants to talk about making fake photo ops. Well, he made a fake photo op of giving biscuits to soldiers. Like, oh, thank you for coming here. Here's your complimentary biscuits from the president. And a handshake while you're at it. I'm just such a good president. And then he goes and gets a picture saying, oh, we're letting them stay inside of the Capitol. We're letting them stay inside of the Capitol. Get some photos of them on the floor and shit inside in a nice, warm, cozy place on a hard floor, you know. Would have been better than where he sent them to. He sent them to the fucking, uh, the, the parking garage. How many thousands of soldiers and only one fucking toilet? One family t type bathroom that has one toilet, one sink? And a baby change and shit, probably? The fuck? Like, and all you motherfuckers gave them was biscuits and then you booted them down to the cellar, you know. Go sleep on this hard concrete. This hard, cold concrete. Don't scratch my car while you're in there, right? <laughs> like, and then that guy, like, if it wasn't for the Republicans, at least they took down a fucking shit ton of fucking big ass pizzas to the boys. You know, I mean, fuck. At least they gave them fucking real food instead of some little packet fucking biscuits or cookies, whatever the fuck, you know? <sighs> but, oh yeah, talk about fucking communist ass shit too, is that you got this going on. He wanted to get all pissed about these fellas here fucking turning their back on him. But yet, why would the National Guard be called out just to watch you prance around and play president? You supposedly brought them there to protect your dumbass. And how are they supposed to protect you if they're watching and participating in your little parade and acting like they're enjoying you prance around like a fucking moron? But no, you want to fucking talk about attempting to get these people fired and whatnot. Have any Republican or as far down as a Libertarian taken out of National Guard or any kind of military, right? Because they don't agree with you, so we can't have these people backing us, right? But come to find out, they, they have to have their backs turned to you. In order to watch the surrounding area. Or else they're just going to watch somebody eventually probably cap your ass when you're doing a parade. If you want all the military people watching you instead of protecting you. I mean we already seen what happened to JFK for making a stupid call. But honestly I can't wait till you make a stupid call like that. Because I would love to see it. But I'm not promoting violence, and I'm not condoning it. But it would be fucking awesome, though. 
but I'm going to leave this here. Time to go edit now. Try to cut this down. I'm at like an hour and nine minutes now, so we'll see what we can. Um, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. If you would, hit that like button down there. And please help and share this content. I am Fat Mike, signing out.